So basically, me and two of my friends were downtown filming, right? And it was super dark. So we were getting the drone ready. We were trying to set everything up. We're getting ready for the shot. So we see this guy walk by, right? And he's looking kind of like suspicious. He's like staring at us and as he walked by and then he didn't say anything. And we try to say hello, but he didn't say anything back, right? So we're like, okay, whatever. He's probably just like going home. And then about three minutes later, the most crazy thing happens. I see the same guy again, and he's walking towards us. And this was probably the scariest night of my life. What's up, guys? So today I'm going to be talking to you about the whole filming process for one of my experimental short films, A Young Owl. I filmed that during early March. And yeah, this was probably one of the craziest filming experiences I've ever had. So this all kind of started off one day, and I was making the previous project that I still haven't finished now, but just stay tuned for that one. It's coming soon, hopefully. But basically I was working on that project and after filming that, I felt super burnt out. So I was talking to one of my friends about it and he said, you know, why don't I make a project that's true to myself? So essentially I was like, okay, let's, you know, make something get me back on track. So here comes shooting day, right? So I met up after school with one of my friends who's the main character and we shot a bunch of stuff in the museum. This museum was actually super nice and they let us film in there. And it, honestly, it added a lot to the project. Okay, so after that, I went to my clarinet lesson and he went home. And after dinner, we all met up again and it was kind of late. It was around like six o'clock and uh, it was me, the main actor, and two of my other friends who were helping with the sound and the behind the scenes. So we were supposed to record the scene of this guy playing, you know, pool, right? But there's a lot of people in there and we didn't expect that. So the manager told us to come back when he texts one of us. And basically we left and we're like, hey, let's go film the other scenes while we wait, right? So then we went to the gas station to film some scenes there. And honestly, the employee that was working there was super nice. She even acted in it. So it was super cool. Um, we got some really nice shots in the gas station. And this is probably the only scene that goes that successful in the whole night of shooting. So after this, we were driving downtown. We were supposed to go to this Chinese restaurant to film more scenes. And while we are driving, my friends started talking about some parking garage. And I was like, wait, I've heard about this parking garage before. And they were telling me how cool this whole place was and how insane looking it is. So I was like, okay, let's go. And we were driving there and then we see like cop cars, right? I see a cop car right in front of me. There's another cop car and I live in a small town, right? So there's usually not any cop cars. So it was kind of unusual. And we were kind of like, what is going on, right? But anyways, we head up to the parking garage and we start filming everything and you know it goes well actually um i had to switch lenses because it was super dark and i use a lower aperture lens and then you know the scenes actually look really good so after we finish filming in the parking garage we go to the chinese restaurant we're supposed to go to right so we walk into the chinese restaurant and everyone's super hungry they didn't eat dinner before so everyone you know ordered some food and they started eating it and they finished their food and we start filming you know some of the leftover food scene and that goes kind of good there was a shot where i had to be outside and i i was like kind of anxious because it was like dark outside there was no one there it was kind of cold and so I went outside to film, it was kind of scary low-key, but then after filming that scene, my friend had to leave, so I lost one of the crew members, so it was just me and two other people left, right? And this is where it starts getting, you know, worse and worse. So we drove back to the shopping mall with, you know, where the pool scene was going to happen and where we all parked our cars, right? I dropped my friend off and he went home, so it was just three of us. We walked to the bar with the pool tables and everything, and we start filming, right? So then basically while filming, I hear like in the kitchen, like these people are like cussing us out. Like they're like effing like film, film kids, just like super scary. And I was like, y'all didn't just hear that? Like, and then one of my friends also heard it and he was like, what the heck is happening? Right? So it was like kind of like awkward filming there. Cause I knew they were talking smack and like, you know, they weren't happy with us being there. Obviously the manager was super cool. Like he was a film student, so he understood it, but his workers, they were pretty mad. I don't know why. I mean, they don't close for another like 
honestly six hours so i don't know what was happening but we started filming there and we tried to get out as fast as possible because that was I don't know. I didn't like filming that scene. So then after filming that, we drive back downtown, right? So we're, we're supposed to film some of the exterior scenes. So then we see this guy and he like walks out of nowhere, right? And he was like kind of sus, right? And he had like a, like a hoodie on. And I know I wasn't supposed to judge, but like he just seemed like he was on drugs or something. And he shouted something at us and we're like, what the heck? He's kind of creepy, right? So I was like... I was looking at this guy. So then, basically, he, like, disappears. And we're like, okay, I think we're chilling. And I start setting up the drone, um, trying to connect it to the controller. And it was, like, it was a mess. It was my first time flying a drone, or second time, I guess. So then I was, you know, setting everything up. As I was doing that, I see the guy come out of nowhere. And he starts walking towards the three of us. But it seemed like he was walking straight towards me, right? And sadly, I didn't get any of this on camera. We were just so scared at the time. But this is for real. I'm not kidding. But he's like walking towards me. He was, he started slow. So then he starts speed walking towards me, right? And I was like, oh, so there's a guy coming at me. Um, so then one of my friends was like, hi. And he did not say anything. He's still coming closer and closer. He's starting to cross the street towards us, right? So then he starts coming closer and closer. And I was like, starting to get scared right and i look at his hands and my friends saw that too but he had something like this long and it was shiny like it reflected off the street lights and i mean what else can it be besides you know so he was going towards us super fast with something on his hands and i was like oh ooh, this is uh not good so essentially the whole time when i was looking at him my back was towards him right i'm not i was not like this i was like this but like even more my back was towards him and i was like oh and every time i would look behind myself he would get closer and closer with this thing in his hand i was like getting scared right so as he gets into my social space which is like you know within six feet i was like oh no and you know the whole like anti-asian violence thing you know and i hear the news about all these attacks and stuff so i was like my instincts kicked in right i was like oh i can't so i like kind of ran away from him like behind my my homies both my friends were just standing there like frozen and i just like ran behind them right because i was like i was i was terrified you know it just like my my instincts kicked in so once i did that my back was no longer towards him so i see him come within inches of me and then he like turns super fast and walks the other way and i was like what just happened and i was like frozen my both my friends were frozen too and we were like so shocked and then one of my friends was like, yo, I think we almost died. And then my other friend was like, yeah, I th my, my life just flashed before my eyes. It was so scary, okay? Like, and we kind of like joked it off, but we were like deep down, we were so scared. We were looking around, we're, they were like, are you done yet? You know, like, let's go, let's get out of here, right? So then I finally get my drone connected. It was pitch black, right? And I start trying to fly and it took so long to connect and update and everything. We like chilled in my car because I was like, nah, I'm not, no, I'm not standing out there in the middle of nowhere. So then I finally get the drone connected. I fly it into the air, instantly into the darkness. And I start trying to like figure out how to fly it. So the shot is supposed to be like, you know, it's going backwards while my friend's running towards it, right? So it's one of those like tracking shots. And I was trying to practice that. And as I was doing it, I see like red alert signs everywhere. And I was like, that's not good. Just as I see the red alerts, I see that the drone is within inches of a building. And I was like, this is not good. But then I remember like my film teacher, he told me that there's no way the drone would ever crash because that sensor is built in all over it. And I was like, okay, then I'll stay calm. It's, it's chill. So I was trying to like move it away. But at that time, it was too late because I see the red signs and all these things. And my mind was going crazy. I was like, oh, and I was like, I mean, I almost got stabbed, right? So I was like, so much things was going through my head. And then bang, the freaking drone flies into the side of the building. My friend was right underneath it because he was like the main character, right? He was like right underneath it. And he was telling me how when it crashed into the building and like sparked up, and then the propellers like exploded and it like fell down all the way down like at least like 20 feet and it was 
it was insane and i had no idea like that was gonna happen so i was like i was so scared and i ran towards it and it, i mean the drone was intact besides the propellers and i was like oh oh no after i get the drone picked up um get the pieces all packed in my car i was like okay we're not getting the drone shot so then we drive to these other areas like this little performing place with a bunch of led lights looked really nice but after all that has happened we were terrified we were so scared we were so cautious like we were looking around like i was looking this way my friend was looking this way my other friend was looking this way and we were like we did not want to get hurt, right? And we were like so cautious the whole time. We were there and I started filming and I was like, yo, just be on the lookout for the creepy guy. And soon enough, my friend spots him hiding like in a corner of the street. And bruh, that place arriving was two minutes away. So he would have walked like probably 10, 15 minutes. I don't know if this is a coincidence or not because I mean, what are the chances he would do that like he would be at one spot and like spook us and then show up in another spot like that was i was crazy and i was like home oh, that that was really scary you know that was the last scene of the movie and we got in our cars and finally left and it was like 11 o'clock and yeah my parents were not happy with me but it was it was one of the craziest experiences ever and you know, I think what I learned a lot from this movie, besides the filmmaking aspects of like, you know, filming at night and filming lights and all that, I think, you know, safety is so important. And that was kind of dumb of me to be downtown super late with like only just a few people. Like that could have been a whole different story, you know, like I'm so glad to be, you know, still here being able to tell you this story, but just always remember like, this is serious stuff, right? Honestly, the film turned out really good. I'm really proud of it. I, I should be able to show you guys the movie soon. Um, it just has to go through the festival circuit. First experimental film, and it was crazy. After that, um, we got one of my friends to compose a music for it. Because I was just going to get some soundtrack online on, you know, Epidemic Sound and stuff. But my, you know, film teacher encouraged me to do something, you know, experimental with it. And I found one of my friends who's like super talented at like piano and stuff. And like she helped me compose the whole piece just by like watching the computer. And I had like like this mic like next to her and it was recording it. So, you know, it was pretty fun. At the end, it turned out really good. Super excited, super happy with it. But you know, just keep in mind in the future, you just gotta be super careful when you're filming, you know, very careful. And with the drone thing, you know, I probably should have done some test flights before actually filming, but it's my fault. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good luck in your future filmmaking endeavors. Peace out.